Hi folks, so I've got something uh, pretty interesting for teardown here. Uh, this is a saw stop uh, emergency uh, table saw break. And uh, the idea behind it is this will sit just under the blade of your table saw. And if the system detects that there's something funny in contact with the blade, it'll fire this uh, chunk of aluminum, which is the break, into the blade and stop it very quickly. Uh, you know, to prevent injuries. There's videos on YouTube of uh, people intentionally testing this thing by uh, touching the blade with their bare hands and they're not severely injured, uh, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, clearly this has been used, as you can see from the bite marks in this thing, and uh, what happened is, uh, well, these things are, are prone to a false positive. Um, they use an electrical uh, method for detecting foreign masses on the uh, blade. Uh, I don't know if it's capacitive or uh, resistive or what, but uh, if this thing detects something uh, that presents an electrical load uh, on the saw blade, it will activate the mechanism and stop it. So what happened was uh, my friend uh, lowered a measuring tape, which is made out of metal, by accident on the blade, and the system detected that and it thought there was something funny going on, so it triggered the system. And unfortunately, these are single-use only, uh, from what I understand. So once it goes off, you have to get a new cartridge. But, on the positive side, we have something interesting to tear apart. And you can already see there's a lot of electronics going on here. There's a huge capacitor here. Uh, it's very beefy. It's uh, 7,000 microfarads at 200 volts, so there's quite a quite a charge there. We'll have to make sure to safely discharge that. Uh, there's a spring, a hinge, uh, you can see some electrical contacts down here, just a copper strip with a bunch of fingers on it. Uh, clearly this thing will be uh, compressed against the body you know, before it's uh, uh, triggered and it needs some sort of way to make contact. Uh, let's see an interesting uh, DB9 port here. I don't know if that's serial or what, but I don't see any other electrical interconnect, so I'd imagine uh, power is provided uh, to the module. Okay, so this opens like this. That's easy. Nice little spring. Alright, so this catch here, it's just a little catch what we're interested in is to see how this catch is actually released. But anyway, so I guess this is how it would sit in normal operation and then bang, it would get released. So this thing is either ultrasonically welded or otherwise uh, made impervious to uh, normal attacks. Apparently they want you to send these back if it was triggered due to a human incident, but this wasn't a human incident. Okay, so I got medieval on it. I just cut this part off with a hacksaw. And then I just cut a little slot right on the seam and then hammered in a screwdriver and it popped right open. Let's check to see how much juice is left in that capacitor, because I don't really want to uh, Shock the crap out of myself. All right, DC volts, all right. Okay, so there's nothing left, according to the meter. Okay. Oh, it's 1,000 microfarad, not 7,000. At the top, it looked like seven, but... Yeah, anyway, something like this will definitely <laughs> give you quite the shock. Okay. So here's the uh, bottom assembly. Looks like this fit in like this. Looks like there's this piece of metal here that's holding down this contact on this micro switch. So they definitely know I'm in there. Perhaps it's a safety thing that uh, discharges the cap if there's a human ingress. Alright, let's pull this out. I can definitely see some charring down there. Can you see that? That wasn't from me. Uh, 
All right, there appears to be well some sort of release mechanism. This feels like spring steel. Let's check the continuity. I'm quite curious to know how they actually got current onto this thing. So there's no continuity in this thing. So I guess they must have had some sort of contact on here. Let's see if we can find it. So if you look closely here, you see on the bottom of that board, there's just two wires. Uh, let's see if we can get some better light here. Yeah, you see there's two little wires that come across and this entire area looks pretty singed. So perhaps it was this sort of arrangement where spring tension was holding this spring steel on the contacts and then at the moment of reckoning this thing, uh, yeah in fact I can see kind of the, the shape of this thing kind of matches uh, the shape of this uh, black plastic part. So perhaps it was sitting something like either this which from the shape of the wire seemed likely, or maybe something like this. I'm gonna go that it went back around and uh, made contact there. All right, so let's have a quick look at the uh, release mechanism. Uh, so I was looking at this pin and this catch here, and it's pretty clear that this is how they went together. Um, because this way doesn't make any sense because it doesn't fit in there. So it looks like that little small side there fits inside this and holds it on. And if we look at um, this part here, the catch goes down inside here. And uh, I figured out where this went. This little T piece here. Looks like it's uh, maybe designed to be replaceable, or maybe, uh, I don't know, it's uh, just easier to manufacture this way. Anyways, this fits in here. Like so, yep. Then, this piece here sits inside, or on top of those, um, I don't know what you call those, rests and the catch goes inside here and is held in place by this pin kinda like that but at the same time it's held in place by this rapidly disintegrating demonstration All right so it goes like this and you see that there's two more little uh, slots or indentations in there. It looks like the wires, the spring steel here, wraps around. You can see that little bend there in the wire, maybe. There it is. Uh, it looks like the wire bends around and holds the catch, or whatever you want to call that, pin in place then loops back around and then goes um, across the contacts here on the PCB and then when that melts these wires get released this pin gets pulled in this way down inside the hole there because the uh, this lever here is getting pulled up by this giant spring so that all gets pulled in uh, and therefore releases the arm. So that's kind of how that works. A bit hard to show because the spring steel stuff is very springy and hard to uh, handle, but I think you get it. So just at a glance, this is the main switching MOSFET. Um, I guess to fire the charge that's uh, held in here 
for a quick melt of the uh, of the wire. This is an ST TYN six four zero. I'll look that up. So it looks like a little transformer there, I guess, to generate the high voltage. A bunch of resistor networks, some random support silicon, a big diode. Let's look at the reverse. All right, so it looks like this resistor here is the uh, bleed resistor for uh, the capacitor um, that'll pull down the charge on this capacitor safely over time. Let's see if it's connected straight across. First of all, what's the value? Okay, let's, uh, let's use the right setting there. All right, it's uh, 670 ohms. And across the capacitor, there is about a K, so I guess there's something more going on there, but let's move on. All right, that looks like just a little voltage regulator. This is an a P, oh, a PCAN? It says PCAN. Uh, ACT 541. I'll look that up. There's a little button here. And there is this TMA 980 uh, 320F 2801PZA big boy over here, which I'll definitely uh, find the data sheet for, at least hopefully. Looks like some sort of microcontroller, or hopefully it's not an application specific IC. Let me uh, take a look at that, get back to you. Okay, so uh, this part here is actually an SCR. Uh, it makes sense for this application. Once you trigger this thing, you want it to dump all the charge uh, without having to, say, hold on and transist or anything like that. Uh, this particular unit is a 40 amp, 1000 uh, volt uh, rated device. Um, it's rated for uh, really high current pulses. Um, and performance under high current pulses, so ideal for that. Uh, let's see, this is not a diode, I got that wrong, it's a little capacitor. Uh, this is a little uh, digital signal processing chip. It's got uh, you know, a little processor inside, uh, 32K bytes of uh, flash, and I think it was 12K bytes of RAM. Uh, I couldn't find any information on these smaller chips, um, but where they are, they just tell me they're either little local regulators or little diodes or transistors, uh, things like that. This chip up here is just a octal buffer. Um, looks like it's tied into the little uh, D9 port up here, so some uh, isolation or uh, digital signal conditioning. And looking at the board over here, there's a whole bunch of uh, inductors, resistor, and capacitors uh, kind of strewn all over the place with uh, little little chips kind of interspersed. And these are probably something like op-amp uh, circuits or some other analog conditioning. So it looks like they're doing a lot of filtering and uh, processing in the analog domain and then throwing it over to this DSP for uh, further processing in the digital domain. So. Uh, this isn't just a simple little, you know, uh, ohm meter or capacitance meter. It looks like it's doing something pretty serious in here to uh, uh, figure out when it should trigger. Perhaps it's uh, looking at the edges in the signal that would be present from the teeth starting to dig into a material um, so that it's not triggered by something coming into the side of the blade uh, or something like that. Now, maybe it's even determining the type of material. Um, that's being forced into the blade to try to prevent um, false triggers from, say, slightly damp wood uh, or maybe water getting spilled on it or uh, whatever. But uh, unfortunately I don't think I can go much further than this without uh, 
reading the flash and trying to disassemble it and that's something that I'm uh, not really going to go into but uh, anyway this is the looks like it's version 2 revision 8 copyright 2007 so uh, it looks like they've been at this for quite a while